again, I want to thank um, the Health Management Associates people for joining us tonight. I'm sorry we're running late. Um, we'll, we'll give you all the time that we had indicated. <clears throat> so we might have to go out and get some more dessert, Steve, or something like that, if that's what it takes. The, um, the, uh, first of all, let's do some introductions. We'll go around the table, start at the end again with, uh, with Ed. Just introduce yourself, whether you're an attorney or a part of the uh, options group. And then uh, Health Management Associates can introduce themselves. So, Ed, why don't we start with yourself? Sure. My name is Ab Lamaster with Ponder and Company. Uh, we're advisor uh, through this process, strategic process. And I'm Dave Atchison with Ponder and Company. I'm Joseph Hanratty, and I resent the Board of Attorney Disclosure Requirement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ken Marino, a local podiatrist on the American County Board. Joan Stearns on the local options board. I'm Ravi Chandra on Monroe Board of Trustees. Uh, John Kurtz, trustee. Steve Purvis, president and CEO here at Monroe Regional. Richard uh, CFO, Monroe Regional. Paul Clark, chief operating officer. Juan McPherson, VPMA, chief quality officer, Monroe. Casey Nolan from Navigant Consulting. I'm Alan Levine. I'm the Florida Group President for Health Management Associates. I'm Pete Lawson, Executive Vice President for Development for Health Management. Here he is, the President and CEO of Health And I'm uh, uh, Tim Goldfarb. I'm CEO at Shands. Well, thank you for all. Again, this is a new format, a new, a new project for all of us here today. We will put the sign-in sheet, if that's okay. Uh, Mike, you, we may need a new one. And during the meeting, if anyone would like to speak, they could go fill in their name. The, um, the process would be uh, 45 minutes of uh, company presentation, 45 minutes of questions by the <clears throat> options committee, then we'll have 10 minutes of uh, Q&A with the public, uh, which could be 10 or a little bit more if that's what it takes. And then after that, uh, we would be discussing, uh, uh, we would ask the company if, if they would not mind leaving at that point, so then we if it's an announced public meeting, you're allowed to stay, I guess, if that's appropriate, John, or John Dean. And um, right. we could have an open discussion on, uh, on those groups that were here today. So do we do appreciate you coming, and I will turn it over to yourselves to uh, begin your presentation. Anyone from the public who would like to speak, you can uh, sign the sheet now or wait till uh, we're done. Well, good evening. Um, on behalf of Health Management and Chance Healthcare, we're uh, very pleased to be here tonight. Uh, for truly a historic moment in the, in the life and the history of the community and uh, Marion County and Monroe Regional. So uh, Health Management and Chance is pleased to be here tonight to give you our thoughts on uh, working together with the hospital and the community to take the great platform of healthcare that you've had for literally centuries um, here and bring it to the next level, knowing what we know of healthcare going forward. Uh, there's a great event tonight, historical event tonight, and there's a great historical event in Denver this week. There's a debate going on between two presidential candidates, and one of those topics, I'm sure, is going to be healthcare, in terms of how to address healthcare in the United States and uh, what will it look like. And our proposal to you tonight reflects those things, taking the great tradition of uh, Marion County and Monroe Regional, and combining it with the talents of two of the great Florida organizations in this great state of ours, combining the talents of Chance Healthcare with Health Management Associates, the largest healthcare operator in the state of Florida. So, two Florida organizations combining the talents of Florida people and communities with physicians and putting them together. And enabling the best local health care that you and the community and us together can provide to you. Uh, so tonight we'll give a presentation with uh, even background on health management 
in Florida and nationwide. Um, Shands Healthcare, uh, one of the leading tertiary academic health systems in the United States. And our thoughts and ideas and perspectives on what we can do together with you here at Monroe Regional to provide the best platform for healthcare going forward. Um, as, a, as an industry, as a hospital provider, you know many, many things have changed in Marion County since it was founded in 1844. And many things have changed in Monroe Regional since it was founded 100, over 100 years ago. The biggest change in healthcare, whatever goes on in the debate tonight and this week, is that the patient care has, has changed in terms of patients no longer need to be treated in just a hospital setting like they used to be. But they're treated at home, in physician's offices, and more on an outpatient basis. So tertiary hospital systems that have been independent for years, like Monroe, successfully independent, all over the United States, they're having to make choices of partnering with other hospitals and physician groups and other communities in order to treat a broader market base in order to survive in healthcare. So our proposal tonight and with you going forward is to combine all those things that we have done great things with in Florida and nationally with academic teaching systems, with community hospitals and rural hospitals. So you're creating an opportunity for more patients to be referred here at Monroe given the new healthcare environment we're in. So with that, um, just very briefly, you know the details of our proposal. Um, propose a 40-year lease, so the, the district continues to own the facility, and we're proposing a range of um, acquiring the assets and operations of the lease between a range of 170 and $230 million. And as part of that, commit to the $75 million capital spending um, that you've expressed a desire to keep that um, flow of funds in your hospital, in your health system, in order to stay competitive for the first five years. Fully commit to the $150 million phase one development program that uh, the district and the hospital and Steve and his team have laid out here for the past uh, several years. Uh, as part of that, Shands Healthcare will be a clinical affiliated partner and all the services and protocols that we have experienced uh, at a local level with Shands as well as a state level we will work with the medical staff and the hospital to integrate those things so when patients need care beyond Monroe Regional, that they receive that care at Shands, that's the choice of the patients and the, and the, and the family. Uh, we'll keep the existing care, charity care program in place. So your charity care program that you've had here at Monroe Regional for literally decades will keep in place. Uh, we'll put together a Florida uh, limited liability company that pays taxes back into the community. Um, and all the employees who are employed here today, the next day they remain employees with the same tenure, similar benefits, same pay grade as they do today. And ultimately, we believe that that combination of uh, structure, combining the talents of uh, Shands Healthcare, health management, and working together with the community to provide Monroe Regional Health System with the best opportunities uh, going forward now and in the future. So with that, I'll turn the presentation over to Gary Newsom, who's the President and CEO of Health Management, to share with you background on, on health management and our mission, vision, values, and quality. Gary? Good evening. I know it's been a long day for you. Um, this is an important process uh, for this community and for, for much, uh, most of you who have been associated with the hospital for, for many, many years in the other health care system. <clears throat> you know, I uh, get to come along time to time and help the team do some presentations, so they put a few slides in for me. And so I, I have the opportunity to share just a few things with you. You know, a few years ago, we decided to reevaluate re what really is our mission as an organization, Health Management Associates. What really do we do as an organization? And uh, it became very clear to us as we evaluated health management, the, the company that uh, partners with 70 different communities 
uh, across the nation in 15 states. What really do we do? We, we really came uh, to realize what we do is enable America's best local health care. And as with the changes of health care reform, with the changes that are happening uh, just naturally with health care uh, in terms of reimbursement systems and uh, in terms of all the different uh, mechanisms of reporting, the, the quality initiatives in health care, which are all great. Uh, in reality, what we're finding is that more and more we see ourselves not only enabling America's best local health care, but saving America's best local health care. It's very critical. I grew up in a small town in Virginia, and uh, I remember uh, being taken to the hospital, my mother taking me up the hill, it was on a hill. Virginia and Southwest Virginia, everything's on a hill, unlike most of Florida. But uh, I remember her dragging me up there and getting that penicillin shot whether I needed it or not because I'd stayed home from school uh, with a little fever. But in our lives, and you know, in that same hospital, my uh, two oldest children were born. It's amazing you know, how a community hospital, a local health system, affects the lives of so many people, generation after generation. And, uh, and that's where we see ourselves as an organization, is enabling that health care to continue to be uh, provided in communities just like this. Uh, because it's ever increasingly the, the issue with consolidation in health care. It's, it's the complexities alone uh, are driving uh, great independent community-owned hospitals and systems uh, to have to partner. And uh, they have to partner for a variety of reasons. Scale means a lot in terms of being able to tap into the resources necessary and be able to uh, navigate uh, the complexities of healthcare. And it's even going to get more complex than it is today, quite frankly. Um, I'm technologically challenged. So if I go backwards, we'll, okay, there we go. With that, I just want to share with you a few, few points. <clears throat> uh, we were just uh, announced that 41 of our hospitals were named by Joint Commission of the top performers on key quality measures in 2012. That's 64% of our hospitals. In reality, only 18% of their hospitals that they surveyed were recognized in that group. But yet, 64% of ours. Last year, we had 59% of our hospitals that were recognized by Joint Commission as top quality hospitals in the nation. And I think that's a great data point for us because we do focus on quality. It's key for our success going forward. Uh, additionally, Fortune Magazine announced uh, the world's most admired uh, companies uh, with Health Management Associates being recognized ranked number one in healthcare and quality product and services, and ranked number one in social responsibility. We're very proud of that. We work hard in our communities. Our best advocates are the communities where we've had hospitals for 10, 20 years. Uh, you can call uh, leaders in those communities and they can tell you what the condition of their hospitals or the situation that they were in at the time and where they are today. It's a vast difference uh, for the good in, in healthcare. We're very um, proud of those relationships that, that have been ongoing. I think, uh, see, I'm slow on the slide. There, there's the fortune slide. But um, the, in reality, what is part of the process of looking at enabling America's best local health care, how do we get there and what do we do? Now, this is probably very similar to other hospitals that you've seen. We do have a unique pillar in there, and that's innovation. Uh, and innovation truly is the key to success in the future. Innovation in the way we deliver health care, innovation from a technological standpoint. We lead uh, the world in robotic orthopedic surgery. We don't lead Florida or the nation. We lead the world in the robotic orthopedic surgery. We are probably number one or number two in the nation in terms of Da Vinci robotics in terms of the number of our hospitals that have that technology. We think that's very important. Uh, we believe that IT and the connectivity with doctors, which is so critical for any healthcare system, is very, very important. We have vast resources dedicated to that, that whole project and meaningful use. In fact, 
uh, we are meaningful use certified uh, and we'll have a hundred percent of our facilities and communities meaningful use certified in 2013 is that correct I think um, but on these pillars uh, you know the people the service quality innovation finance and growth are all critical I constantly as we talk to our associates as we meet in meetings we talk about those and if something we're talking about doesn't fall into one of those six categories we ask ourselves why do we discuss it why is it important if it doesn't fall into one of those six but the three foundational principles are key to this one is we're all servant leaders in our organization. We have 45,000 associates. We want them all to be servant leaders, leaders in their own right. We want everyone in the organization to feel like they can act and do, make decisions. And because we believe and have confidence that 99% of the time they know the answer. Why delay the care? Why delay the process? Why delay things when they know the answer? Servant leadership is critical. Uh, we do the right thing in all situations. Sometimes the right thing is not the right financial decision, but it is the right thing to do in terms of quality or service from an innovation standpoint, from our people throughout the organization, could be the right thing to do. And the third is we don't settle for anything but best. Now, are we perfect? No, I'll be the first one to tell you we're not perfect. I can tell you with 3.5 million patient contacts in our hospitals every year, we've made a mistake and but I can tell you that when that happens to an individual uh, family or an individual uh, that has a bad outcome or a bad experience or anything that's uh, not desirable in terms of their care for that family it's a hundred percent failure even though we may be 98.3 in our core measure scores or we may have 41 hospitals on the top quality list. Those are great statistics, but when we fail a single individual, for them it's 100%. And that's a lofty goal. But that's our goal in this organization. We never want to fail. And, uh, we have the resources to try to drive that home. Just uh, This is our footprint of our organization. Um, we have some way out west. Those are great hospitals, by the way. Uh, but we're very proud of our presence in Florida. The footprint in Florida is just outstanding. We have great communities where we work. Many of those communities, we've been there for 20 years, 25 years. And um, so it, it's a great place to be. We, we believe uh, very strongly that Florida uh, is a great state, state for a lot of reasons. It will continue to grow. It's a desirable location uh, when the economy turns around there will be even greater need for health care services in the state our home office uh, headquartered is in Naples Florida so we very much consider ourselves a Florida company and uh, I imagine we have the shortest distance from any of the uh, people that will present to you to travel here um, that would be my guess but it's exciting you know health care listen folks this is as excited as I get I mean, I'm giving you 100% right now. <laughs> so, but that being said, we're excited. We want to be part of your community. We think this is a great part of the state. Uh, you have a lot of pride in, in your hospital and healthcare system. Uh, the physicians that cross the door and come here and bring their patients for care see this as their hospital. You see this as your hospital. Uh, the associates throughout the nursing, the, all the clinical people, the housekeepers, dietary, this is their hospital. Well, in, in our organization, it's still your hospital. And that's the way we approach it. We're excited to be here. Whatever your decision is, what direction you go, whether you remain independent or whether you go with a partner, uh, we certainly like to be considered. Uh, it's, a, it's a great time in healthcare. It's a challenging and frightening time in healthcare. Uh, and I assure you, we have the resources to. Uh, with every all of us over the hunt. Thank you. I'm going to turn the time over to uh, Tim Goldfarb, our partner. I'm going to use the mic this way. I don't like standing behind the uh, podium. Um, well, first, I know I came the shortest distance. 
because I left at five and I got here in time. Uh, so I am from your community in a very real sense. Uh, Scans has served the community in partnership with Monroe and the medical staff here for many years, long before I came here 10 years ago. Uh, I uh, got a, a couple of slides that just for formality, I'm going to flash through them, but then I'm going to say what I really uh, came to say to you. Uh, first, I guess for the record, this is uh, Shans up the up the road here. Um, those are our operating beds, not our licensed beds. Uh, we're almost right to license at this point. We're we're pretty full uh, as a, as a hospital. The ER visits this year are about going to push ninety thousand. So we're a growing organization. Uh, I think you know some of these things uh, to the left there in terms of the units at Chance at UF. The part I want to emphasize, only thing I want to emphasize on this slide, since you know us so well, uh, is uh, our relationship with Orlando Health. Uh, because uh, Gary touched on some very important things in terms of the change in the marketplace and the ability for Monroe to have some leverage in the marketplace going forward. If you chose to join us, you would not only uh, join the 22 HMA hospitals in Florida, uh, you would actually join the eight hospital system that is in Orlando, Orlando Health. Uh, they have a joint venture with uh, uh, HMA uh, at St. Cloud and also uh, our network as well. So you would be uh, joining a substantial network in Florida to support this community and, and support Monroe. Uh, this joint venture slide I'm going to come back to in a second. This really speaks to uh, our relationship with HMA, Shan's relationship with HMA and in Live Oak and Lake City and in Stark. Uh, this is just an example of some of the protocols we've already established between uh, Shans, the faculty at the University of Florida, and the HMA hospitals, where we've developed things that the local medical staff and the local hospital are interested in, in terms of rapid movement of patients from their ED or their hospital for hospital, hospital transfers uh, to Gainesville. Uh, the purpose here is rapid trans uh, transfer, a just say yes process where there's no process that a medical staff member in your facility uh, or your hospital has to run through and those patients are immediately transferred because we're literally in the same system. Uh, this In these communities, uh, stroke, ischemic stroke, uh, trauma, cancer, and chest pain are the areas that we worked on. They might be the same here uh, in Ocala, or they might be different, very honestly. It's, it's how we would work together to identify those. So I want to go back to this. Uh, it's a busy slide, and I don't intend to go through it. This just talks about a very similar situation that you're going through, where Shans made a decision to form a joint venture company with HMA that would own and operate uh, the three hospitals in these three communities. I can honestly tell you that in many ways I've been on that side of the table uh, because I sat in that audience or on this side of the table and had to make a decision of who to partner with. Uh, we had had a history at Chance in these communities of either breaking even or losing money uh, in each of these hospitals. We were very concerned that we were not serving those communities well. That in the long run, there was not enough capital investment, physician recruitment and development in each of these communities, and that we might not be the right people to do that by ourselves. So we started interviewing prospective partners. A little less formal than this, but really the same process. Okay? You're evaluating the various companies to work with, try and decide what they bring to the table in terms of capital investment, what's their reputation, are they in it for the long term, because this was a community partnership between Shands and the, the commissions in Stark and Live Oak and Lake City. <clears throat> and I would say that ultimately it came down to a cultural decision. Uh, because a lot of these companies and I'm, uh, these are my partners today, but they weren't before. A lot of these companies are very strong from a financial perspective. 
A lot of them have a lot of experience. But when it comes down to the decision, it's a fit decision because you're talking about all the employees for whom you have responsibility, and you're talking about your long-term commitment to the community. So who are you comfortable with? Who do you trust to partner with you to continue to develop health care in your community? When it got down to it, it was an easy decision. When I spoke with Gary, you saw that low-key, steady, pretty kind of presentation. And that's how he is as a CEO. You absolutely can count on him at every minute. The other part that I liked about our discussion is he had a computer with him where he could tap into the waiting times of every emergency department in the entire system. And so it was a kind of a thing for him to make sure that there was throughput and good customer service in every ED. So I immediately became comfortable with him. I had long before become uh, comfortable with Pete. Alan Levine had not joined the company at that point. So the decision became a culture one. So what I would suggest to you, uh, uh, with all humility actually, is ultimately it's a fit thing. So if you are going to make this decision, you really need to think hard about the fit of uh, of your organization and any of us who might propose to work with you. And uh, I happen to uh, obviously believe in this. Now, what happened after this? Uh, I had the great uh, fun, I guess, of receiving my first dividend check two weeks ago. So these three hospitals had a cumulative loss of $12 million three years before the, uh, three years before we put together the joint venture. And, and these gentlemen and the many thousands of people behind them turned that around, included a dividend check in the third year. So unbelievable turnaround. And the last comment I would make is the managers, Rhonda Sherrod is the CEO of, of Lake City. She, I selected her CEO when I was CEO at Shands five years before the joint venture was put together. So what Gary says, they're gonna be committed to management team and they're going to work with the management team and the staff, they mean it because they did in this case. Rhonda is one of their stars, I think, but uh, just done an outstanding job. So uh, I appreciate the time that you've given me this evening. I look forward to answering any of your questions. Thank you. Well, no, I'm not going to go behind the podium because that wouldn't look good, right? Uh, it's good to be here. My name is Alan Levine. Uh, I was. Uh, I was thrilled when, when um, I accepted this position and learned that Shands and Health Management had a partnership. I grew up in Florida. I went to the University of Florida, went to graduate school there. Uh, I trained. Every, my first job was at Shands Hospital. I worked at the, the night shift at the bed board. Uh, I learned a lot about the hospitals in the area because we took a lot of transfers from all the hospitals in, in the region. And um, I'll tell you a story about Seven Rivers. Uh, medical center, and, and then I'll get into a little bit more about who we are in Florida. Uh, Tim mentioned the partnership and cultural fit. Let me tell you why this cultural fit has made so much sense for us. I got a call in the middle of the night in December, uh, a year and a half ago, and uh, it was a friend of mine that lives in Crystal River, and he said a good friend of his who was the head coach at one of the high schools there had, was in the ER, was very sick, um, and they thought he wouldn't make it through the night. <clears throat> found out that he had some uh, very serious, a very serious condition. He needed a special kind of surgery uh, that really only Shans was capable of providing. Um, uh, we, we saved his life that night. Uh, he required a lot of antibiotics and, and some other interventions. We stabilized him. We're having trouble getting him into Shans. Picked up the phone and called. They couldn't get him in. So the, the, they were calling me to see if there was something I could do to help. I called Tim. He answered his cell phone. He was on the stage at a graduation ceremony at the University of Florida at the time. And he said, Alan, let me get on it. And within hours, uh, the gentleman was being transferred. He had a massive stroke uh, while, uh, as, as he was arriving at Shands. They took him to the OR. Uh, today, he's back uh, working with kids in the high school. Uh, there's a great front page story about him. It's a real success story. Shands took care of him, sent him back to the community where our rehab unit at the hospital cared for him and got him back on the basketball court. It's, it's stories like that that really tell the story about the cultural fit between us and Shands. Tim, I, I, I went to the University of Florida, as I mentioned. I got to know all the folks there. 
and, 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 and at Shands, it's a tremendous partnership because we really do like each other and we really believe in each other. I, and I, and it, when I hear something going on that I don't think they're going to like, I pick up the phone, I call them, I say, hey, you need to know this is about to happen. Or something really good's going on, I'll call them and say, hey, this is about to happen. And they always have good advice. They always have good advice for what we can do uh, to, to be better. And we are so glad that they do that. And let me tell you a bit about our presence here in Florida. These are some of the hospitals that we have in our system. A couple of them are outside of Florida that are similar in size and scope to, to your hospital. Uh, as you see, uh, we have a top 50 cardiovascular hospital. Uh, Lustoff is the primary. You've seen this stuff because you guys share some of these values. You guys share some of these recognitions. And that's something we're proud of for you and for us. Uh, U.S. News recognized uh, Heart of Florida and, and Polk County as the uh, best regional hospital in that part of the state. So we're, we're real excited about, about uh, the success we've had in some of our hospitals that are, that are similar in size. This is just repeating some of those. Some of the quality measures, the ones I point to are the core measures on the right side. That's where we're, our scores are, are uh, industry leading. Uh, and you look at some of the newer. These are all primarily new uh, scores that are starting to come out from the federal government. And you can see that Monroe does well, and as do we. There, there's, uh, if you look at the 30-day 30, 30 mortality rates and the 30-day readmission rates, I show you these. Some of these are areas where we, we are looking to improve and learn from some of the good things Monroe's doing. At the same time, we think there's some things that we uh, can share in terms of our best practices with Monroe. That's part of the benefit of being in a, in a larger system where you can share best practices and be part of something that's much bigger. Uh, just some of our uh, integrated markets, you can see that uh, uh, we've got many systems throughout the United States where, we're the, where we have multi-hospital systems. This is relevant because of our presence in North Florida. From Jacksonville, where you have Shands, to Gainesville, to Lake City, to Citrus County, where we have Seven Rivers, to um, Brooksville, Spring Hill, there is a major network of hospitals between health management and Shands. And as we enter into the era of reform, being a part of that network, we think, is going to be very important for Monroe. And, and this sort of gives you a picture of the HMA facilities that are here in, 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 in this particular part of the state. As you can see, we have 3,000 beds in Florida, uh, 132,000, almost 133,000 admissions this year. Um, tremendous experience that, that, we can, that we offer all of our hospitals to go learn from where we have hospitals that have great joint commission results, we try to share the best practices across our system. Pete mentioned the commitment, the capital commitment in all uh, 200 plus million dollars of capital that we're prepared to commit uh, to this hospital for its phase one projects, uh, obviously looking very closely at where the future in healthcare is going and deploying capital to make sure that we're prepared for that. Uh, this is a competitive environment. Uh, you've, got a, you've got a competitor across the street that that's pretty serious about competing, and we are too. We think we can be a very good, loyal competitor. We respectfully compete. We don't say anything bad about our competitors. We think there's things they do well too. But we, want, we culturally believe that we can, we can even learn from our competitors, and frankly, there's some markets where we've actually shared some of our best practices with our competitors, because obviously the better, the better healthcare is in a community overall, the better for everyone. It doesn't have to just be ours. Um, so, one thing that I'll, I'll mention, IT systems, our information technology systems are homegrown. Uh, they're, they're, they're proprietary, which means we can interface with virtually any IT system. We acquired the Sparks Regional Medical Center in Arkansas, a 400-plus bed trauma center hospital that we've operated. They have Cerner. We were able to develop interfaces with those systems. So we, we're very minimally disruptive when we do uh, uh, partner with an enterprise. Um, we are also doing some things. Um, in fact, we're patenting some of the things that we're doing with the, with the information technology. It's going to be some pretty cool stuff that makes the workflow a lot easier for physicians. Doctors obviously are very concerned about all this new technology, in some ways how it slows down their practice of medicine. We think that the technology ought to be value added to doctors, and we've deployed capital and investment to try to help uh, improve what's already out there. We think that when we roll out what we're doing, we're going to, we're going to be, uh, it's going to be transformative. Um, we think that there are synergies that come as part of this system. Bundled payments, accountable care organizations. You've heard all the terminology. A hospital that's standing by itself will have a difficult time in that environment because of the pure uh, um, um, uh, ability, number one, to integrate from primary care all the way up to, to, to uh, 
quaternary services like you have at Shands, the ability to take that full network of care and go to commercial payers and go to Medicare and say, we have the full complement of services, whether it's a transplant or somebody has a mild cold, we can handle whatever it is, whether it's in the outpatient setting or all the way up to a full transplant. We have that scope of service available, which makes our network very attractive. I mentioned Jacksonville, Gainesville, you got Ocala, you have Crystal River, you have Brooksville Spring Hill. You effectively have two major systems. If you consider the HMA Shands partnership and you consider um, the, the other partnership, the other uh, system that's in this region. So what's developing is really kind of a two major systems component. Um, and so right now, um, Monroe is, is, is um, not partnered with, with either of those. We think that by partnering with you, we really can strengthen Monroe and strengthen the footprint and develop a, re a referral relationship with Monroe that takes the services that we can't provide in our community hospital and uses Monroe and its medical staff as our referral center. Um, I want to stop for a minute and ask uh, Dr. Feldman to come up. I, 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 I got to know Dr. Feldman indirectly through Joyce Brancato. Joyce is our CEO in Spring in Seven Rivers. We mentioned the stroke partnership that occurred at Seven Rivers with Shands. We part we sought to partner with Monroe uh, when we developed our interventional cardiology program at Seven Rivers. And when we said, you know, we 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 were tra talking about recruiting more car recruiting cardiologists into the community. We said, you know what? Moti many of the people in this community already have relationships with cardiologists in Ocala. Why do we need to be disruptive to those relationships? Let's work with these guys. They're really well known nationally. They're outstanding, and Monroe offers a great product in terms of its services. So let's partner with Monroe and the cardiology group. And Dr. Feldman led that, and, and I'd like to ask Dr. Feldman just to say a few things about that particular relationship and what his experience has been with us in that particular relationship. Dr. Feldman? Thank you, don't have that problem. <laughs> Our group's been affiliated with HMA and Seven Rivers for a couple of years now. Um, Prasad Potu, a cardiologist I've known for about 25 years, even when I was at Shands, or as we call it, Shambles. Um, I don't think it's changed much in the 23 years I've left. Um, asked us to join because the People, the other cardiologists in Citrus County were really not supporting the Seven Rivers program. We saw it as an opportunity to expand our program and to expand a heart surgical program here because those patients uh, from Citrus County, uh, it was an opportunity. Um, and I, it, it's been good. It's not been perfect, but it has been very good. If it wasn't 34 and a half miles from my doorstep, it would probably even be better. Um, it's certainly, they run a clean hospital. It is reasonably well staffed. They do take care of people regardless of what their insurance is from everything that we can tell. And we certainly have sent patients both with and without insurance here for services that are not available at Seven Rivers. Um, when they've said yes, it's been yes. When they've said no or we'll think about it, it's been no. They've been very straight to deal with us. Um, in that regard, you know, we certainly have respect for them. I don't know that I really can say a whole lot, but if we need to partner in order to move forward, they would certainly be a reason. The reason I asked Dr. Feldman to speak is this is what we do every day. I mean, we work with physicians every single day to solve problems in, in many of our communities. In Brooksville, Spring Hill, Hernando County, those were public hospitals just like this uh, that, that in, the, in, the, in their instance, were bankrupt. Uh, they were seeking a partner. They selected us. We invested almost $100 million to build a replacement hospital, to build a brand new hospital in Brooksville. Our hospital is the only one that has OB. Our hospital is the only one that has a NICU. And we partner with All Children's Johns Hopkins 
uh, to provide NICU services for our hospital down the street in Hernando County. So we've never abandoned the, the, the social, socially responsible position of taking care of the needs of the community, sometimes even when it's not in our financial interest to do so. Uh, and that's, that's the right thing to do, and it has served us well. As to going forward here, our plan would be to work with the medical staff and the board on developing a strategic growth plan. We know there's already a lot of work that's been done by the management team and, and by the board uh, to think about your future. Obviously, that's why you're here now. We would greatly respect the decisions that, that you've made about what you think your needs are, and we would carry those forward. Um, we continue, would, we'd continue the focus on quality and outcomes to learn from the good things you're doing as well as to share the good things we're doing here. Um, collaborating on clinical services. We're, we're working right now with Shans developing some very, and Tim mentioned Orlando Health. We have a tremendous partnership between Shans, Orlando Health, and HMA. We're talking about doing some pretty cool things in the areas of cancer, in the areas of research. Uh, so there's some really neat things that there's going to be some opportunities to be a part of uh, if you're part of this network. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it back over to Pete, and I will look forward to answering any questions you have. So glad to be here and, uh, and look forward to uh, hopefully having an opportunity to continue the dialogue with you. Alan, thank you very much. Um, that uh, concludes our formal presentation. Uh, we did leave some uh, references for all of you to, to review and check on. And these are our partners in, in other states uh, with other healthcare systems uh, because we, we truly partner at a local level. We don't believe that there is a national brand of uh, academic partners. We believe the, it comes first to the local community, uh, then the local market, and then in those um, academic systems that are uh, ingrained in that local community. Here it's with Shands uh, and Orlando Health. In Mississippi, it's the University of Mississippi. In Oklahoma, it's uh, Tegris Health System. And, and, and in North Carolina, it's uh, Vermont Health System. So we believe in partnering um, with community hospitals, and the local regional academic health system. That's why we leave those references with you. Um, and also there's a, a, web, a web portal that you can pull up, whyhealthmanagement.com, that will walk you through um, interactives with uh, your peers, uh, community leaders, uh, physicians, employees, from all those other systems about why did they, as, as Tim mentioned, what, what processes they go through for their uh, health system and their hospitals about uh, why do they select health management, and then what's happened after since uh, since that time? So that will uh, close the formal presentation and um, open questions and answers. Uh, thank you uh, for the information, Randy. You have a question. Um, I understand um, OB is a loser. Um, what what assurance can you give us that um, that wouldn't be shipped up to your partner in Shans and leave us without? Uh, OB services here. We've committed in, in, in both the proposal and certainly here verbally to tell you that we would not do that. In fact, uh, um, the nature of our partnership with Shands is not to, to move business to Shands. The nature of our partnership with Shands has been to support the local physicians in doing what they do. Where they can add value, they do. But so, for instance, I know OB is a very, and I know you're the only ones that do it here in the community currently. We would be very committed to continuing that. For how, how long, sir? In well, term I, of the lease? Uh, I, for OB, I would say probably so. Uh, now, keep in mind, I mean, it, the, the, even currently, um, there's, you, you yourselves currently could make the decision that, that you can't do it anymore. Uh, so we're willing to make the commitment, and we're willing to talk about, talk about that in the course of discussing what the final arrangement looks like. OB, just so you know, the best way to predict the future is to look at the, the old saying, past is prologue. We have never closed an OB program that I, that I can find in the state of Florida. We have never closed a program. In fact, in the programs we have acquired, we've actually expanded them. Because we find, from, from, frankly, from a standpoint of business, if you're doing women's services and children's services well, it actually serves it, it actually serves the rest of your organization well too. And that's been our experience. Uh, if I can uh, supplement that, in uh, Lake City, there are uh, two hospitals, the uh, the partnership with HMA and Chans, which has OB, and there's a competitor, similar competitor that's in this community that does not. 
and not only have uh, that OB been maintained, but they've actually recruited obstetricians in the community and expanded OB. So it's an N of one, uh, but we were exactly we were concerned about exactly the same thing. And in the in the proposal, we specifically said we keep OB for term of um, So. But remember, part of that too is the quality and the reputation of the, the program itself here at Monroe, with the physician support, the uh, the nursing support. It's the preeminent neonatal and OB program in the area. So you have a great history, a great platform, and that makes it easier to make those decisions going forward because you have such a strong history and, and support for the community. So you have to keep all that in perspective uh, relative to a program like that. Joe, I'm not so concerned about losing existing services to Shans. What if we wish to develop a service that would compete with Shans, such as trauma or something like that? Would we have a, a difficulty in establishing a trauma center because Shans wouldn't want to lose the referrals they're getting? Well, I think it's uh, public now, but uh, uh, the management team here uh, chose on their own to put in a an application, an LOI for trauma center here at Monroe, and, and uh, uh, we penned a letter of support for that. Uh, we had discussions with uh, with Mr. Purvis and his team saying we would offer any support uh, that they felt necessary to operate an outstanding trauma program here at Monroe. So uh, using that as an example, and uh, I guess using uh, our other partners as an example, our, uh, you know, we cannot hold the tide back. Uh, medicine is an advancing technology. Uh, we train great physicians, and the physicians in these communities are spectacular doctors, and they are advancing the technology in the local community. So the Shan's philosophy and that of the faculty of the University of Florida is to support the development of technology at the local community. To, other, to do otherwise, very honestly, is a fool's errand. Uh, because that's going to occur to benefit the local community. So we engage to do that, not to drive business into Gainesville. Alan, I had a question for you. In, in this series of acquisitions and leases that you've done over the years, have you uh, gotten into any leases that were the uh, opportunities did not turn out to give you the return you wanted, had to change terms, get out of the lease, or modify your business plan in any of the organizations? Let me start and I'll, I'll turn it over to Pete because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm still, I've been with the company for a little over two years. Okay, Some of the sure. history, uh, Pete, would be more appropriate to answer. I can say that in Florida, we have five right now public hospitals that we lease. Santa Rosa, the two hospitals in Hernando County, uh, Shands in Lake City, um, uh, and Lower Keys Medical Center in Key West. Actually, one more is in Sebring, Florida. All of those, with the exception of Shands, have been in place for a long time. We have local, for instance, in Santa Rosa, the county administrator serves on our board. Um, in Lower Keys, in fact, I think we provided in our proposal letters from each of those hospital district boards sort of testifying to the relationship they have with us. Uh, in all cases, they've said that we've invested more capital than they anticipated we would that the quality of care has improved. In the case of, of Lower Keys Medical Center, they were able to stop assessing a local tax because we were able to come and serve the poor. And they have actually 30% Medicaid and charity. They have one of the highest Medicaid and charity percentages in the state. And they were able to stop assessing a tax. We invested several million dollars of capital in that hospital. And we served um, and continue to serve that population. So, so far, our experience with public hospitals that have been leased to us has been very positive. Uh, and I would I would just turn you to those letters, and certainly you'd, you're welcome to talk to those those folks as well. About a third, John, of our 71 hospitals are leased from uh, the community, or the county, or the city. Um, and all of them, over the course of time, as you grow your business, and as Gary mentioned, many of these hospitals have been under our wing for about 20 years. Your business plan changes, and what you what we end up happening is we put more money back into the hospital to add expand the hospital and recapitalize. So um, most of those leases, we've extended them beyond the original term and in, in, in conjunction with the, the tenant. For instance, in uh, Midwest City, Oklahoma, which is uh, outside of Oklahoma City, um, the 
community, the city that owns the lease and health management um, added two new floors to the hospital and put in $20 million to expand the facility. In that case, the city actually uh, provided the financing back to the to health management in order to expand the hospital. And then we extended the terms of the lease. So we see the lease as a fluid process that uh, there shouldn't be an endpoint. If you are working together in conjunction with the community, you should constantly look at expanding the asset and extending the terms of it going forward with a positive work relationship. Larry? Um, Pete, what concerns me is the uh, uh, $15 million a year for CapEx over five years. Uh, currently, Monroe is investing anywhere between 20 and $25 million a year. And with the idea of expanding services, that $15 million may be just spent on expanding services rather than taking care of the facilities. Uh, we've got buildings on the property, I think, that are 50 years old. Okay. So we, and what they call the new towers are eight years old now, nine years old. So our structures are getting old. So $15 million a year would be just enough to cover the cost of equipment and beds, uh, no structure. So what kind of investment do you perceive putting into CapEx on an annual basis? Remember, the uh, just as a reminder, the, the bid is uh, $75 million. And that's a minimum amount of capital spending. Right? So that's our target floor. So it's a minimum, plus the $150 million phase one uh, project. So between the two, you have a minimum of, of $225 million capital spending. The key is to make sure that your infrastructure uh, maintains itself, right? So you, your, your capital spending, I think your depreciation, David, is four, 14 to $15 million a year. So that's your capital spending case for just normal depreciation. So that ties into that. But if you're going to succeed and grow and expand today, you have to spend more than that. So our, you know, our, our $15 million match as a minimum level for the first five years, plus the 150. So we see it as a minimum. All of our acquisitions, and you can track them back the last uh, uh, 15 years, all of them have spent more capital dollars than what we propose. Because if you're growing uh, your market share, you're growing your quality, you're adding services, you have to spend capital to keep that pace up. One for infrastructure, for older, older houses, but two, just to expand to uh, buy new equipment. Um, a DaVinci robot system, as you know, is you know several million dollars, plus all the advancements and all that. Um, IT systems, you're, you're a McKesson shop. Um, your McKesson system isn't going to be static. You're going to have to add to that and be able to expand. So that's, that's a minimum, and then you should look at it as a minimum. A good example would be Chance, uh, where we had made a commitment over five years, and we actually spent the entire commitment, five-year commitment, in the first year. Uh, they needed there were some infrastructure needs there. Plus, we we put robotic surgery there. We did both. We expanded uh, the services that are available, but we also addressed some infrastructure issues. And OB was one of them. When we renovated the OB unit. In fact, in that community, <clears throat> we spent so much money on capital that the, the hospital district came to us and said, "We want to contribute something." We actually said no, and they said, "Well, we really want to put some money in." So they actually contributed two million on top of the six million that we spent the first year. So that's a, obviously a much smaller hospital. Alan, I can appreciate the five-year commitment, but we're talking about a 40-year lease. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And uh, personally, I, I think it would be ill-advised uh, for the last 10 years, you don't put any money into CapEx. So we need some type of commitment for the balance of the lease, not just five years. Um. We put, the, you know, in our proposal, we said that was for the first five years. But remember, we're, we're leasing it for 40. And we are purchasing the assets and operations of this great institution for um, nearly $200 million. So we're just not going to do that and then just let it run its course. That doesn't make any sense. So our proposal is really for the first five years, not knowing perfectly what your your capital plans are, what your business plans are, and, and I think a five-year perspective today uh, for capital spending gives you a good good perspective. You're going to have to continue to spend capital every single year after. And you know our 
our as a company and then individual hospitals, we spend between you know three to five percent of net revenue every single year. So the the five year at seventy five minutes is just a starting point, and it's a minimum. It would not end after five years. That doesn't make any. That wouldn't make any sense for this type of facility if you're going to grow it. Karen. Um, we all are very aware of the strong educational programs that Shands provides as a teaching hospital. Because we are so close, would this become a teaching facility? Would there be educational um, expansion for students? Um, right now, there's a strong partnership with the College of Central Florida for nursing students, and I'm wondering if that would be extended to physicians as well. Uh First, it depends on what the hospital wants to do and the hospital medical staff wants to do. So we would not, uh, we don't have an inherent desire to do that. It's a community need and a hospital medical staff need. Uh, having said that, uh, there is uh, a proliferation of medical schools in the state of Florida, and there is a stagnation in, in uh, medical residencies. So we are soon, in the state of Florida, to be educating young physicians who are going to leave the state to get their specialty education. And uh, a travesty and I would say a squandering of state dollars to, to do that. So the, I think this legislature, this coming legislature in the next few years, there'll be a serious discussion about state investment in graduate medical education to develop residencies in community hospital settings so that those physicians will stay in those communities. Uh, I don't want to bore you with the statistics, but typically physicians like to stay where they were trained, about 60% of them. So I think there will be an opportunity and there may be a funding source for Monroe to participate that. If Monroe chooses to do that, we will support that. If Monroe wants the uh, University of Florida College of Medicine to help in that, we will help in that. Uh, but we don't have a plan to do that. And by example, our um, partnership with the University of Mississippi in Mississippi, it reflects just that desire by both uh, the University of the State and Health Management. And in Mississippi, we're the largest hospital provider in the state. So in our relationship with the University of Mississippi, it's specifically designed to uh, create education and research opportunities for University of Mississippi medical school students so they stay in Mississippi. So you know, that, that style of relationship we can see have a perfect fit with Shands and Health Management because of their programs in our scope. Monroe currently is involved in a lot of community programs such as the Lee Care Program, the Heart Day, uh, Operation of the Lake Health Care System. What, what uh, community programs or involvement uh, is HMA proud of in any of their particular institutions that they operate? We can actually provide you a market-by-market -market list of programs that our hospitals. That's really driven locally. Um, obviously, in Naples, we're involved in different ways because of our home office uh, uh, presence there. But in our communities, that's really it's as it's as wide-ranging as you can imagine. And in fact, we encourage uh, participation in local opportunities and causes, local organizations, service organizations by executives uh, in the hospitals. And uh, we can provide a very exhaustive list of all of our partnerships in all these communities. But by example, uh, both Gary and I and, and Alan have been uh, hospital CEOs in, in our past. Uh, in each of our cases, and you'll see in, in most of the health management hospitals, um, the CEO has been the chairman of the uh, local chamber of commerce at least once. Um, all the executive teams um, belong to local churches and uh, community organizations. Um, so like Gary said, the local focus is that community focus. Uh, Relay for Life, American Cancer Society, American Hospital Association, uh, Mark of Dimes. So we tailor it towards that community because that's where we think we connect with people. We have, a, for instance, recently, in um, just by way of example, we, we there's a program out of Gainesville called the Morning Mile where they go into the schools to try to work with kids to run in the morning. <clears throat> we, spon we were one of the big sponsors that, that started that program. Um, we, we recently just did a, a partnership with, uh, <clears throat> with the um, 
a Wounded Warriors Project. Uh, our board chair is a retired Marine. It's something he's very, very committed to. We just uh, made a major contribution to the Wounded Warriors. And we have, in fact, one of our, <clears throat> we were awarded a, a recognition by the Department of Defense last year, and we're proud of this, uh, for our treatment of veterans. We, um, in fact, uh, my vice president that works with me uh, is the, was just promoted. He's a brigadier general. He was just promoted to full general, and he commands, um, he's a, he, he was just commissioned uh, two weeks ago in New Orleans as the commander for the uh, Marine Corps Reserve for all ground force Marines in the United States. And he works, he's a part, he actually coordinates our partnership with Chance, uh, General uh, Scott Hartzell. Nice salute. Yeah, he's been, so, when, when, what you saw in our, about us being servant leaders, that's, those aren't words on paper. We expect our leadership teams in each hospital to personally be involved in community organizations and to contribute hospital resources to community organizations. And what we do in each community really is driven by what the local management team decides to do. Uh, because each community, you know, Big Brothers may be a big deal over here, and over here it's junior achievement. It just depends on what is the important issues going on in that community, and the leadership team makes that decision. We don't on the corporate level. As long as we're talking philanthropy, um, we know that the University of Florida has a very, very strong and vibrant foundation. Monroe has one as well. And I would like to know what your philosophy is toward maintaining the growth and um, strength of that foundation. Uh, maybe I'll give you the mechanics of um, putting this partnership together with you. When you, um, David, and Ed walk me through whoever you are selecting this process, you'll have a flow of funds available to you after you pay off your debt and cover your pensions and all. So you'll, you'll take those funds and create a, uh, either contribute to the existing foundation or create a new one, all governed by you know, AG in Florida. So the difference with that afterwards is that those funds are yours to contribute back to the community in whatever, whatever you deem fit. The difference would be historically you probably gave the funds back to the hospital per se. But going forward, you have a community foundation that uh, can use those resources for healthcare and non healthcare services. Uh, the, the hospital uh, or the, the, the medical center, if you will, doesn't dictate to you how to use those funds. So it's purely for the community benefit. The only you know, real caveat for us is that we don't want to see you take those funds and then go build a competing hospital. <laughs> right, so you know we do have that condition in there, and it's so and it's happened. So we, we, but those are the only caveats. Is that it's truly you create a a giving foundation that has a large surplus of funds that it can distribute those funds in, in every way it deems fit, as opposed to historically it gave money back to the hospital. So in, in that sense, if you have um, a desire in this community, this foundation to promote. Research and education, for instance, if you wanted to fund the residency program, you could do that. If you wanted to set up a, um, a fund to compensate people who live in Marion County for indigent health care, you can do that. So it's your choice. And that's the nice thing about it. It really broadens the community contribution back beyond just the, the finite scope maybe it had historically. Joe, you have a question? It raised an interesting issue as a result of the legislation that passed last year that limits what we as trustees can do with proceeds from a sale or lease to, I guess it's indigent care, and, and then half the monies have to go to uh, the Morton County Commissioners for job creation. But one of the you know, issues, we'd like to address that legislatively, and, and I don't know if there's any way of, you know, we've been starting this process before the you know, law was even written, we fall outside of the guidelines we anticipate based upon, uh, we anticipate will probably close after December 31st. So we may not have those issues available to us. But you said something about not doing competing hospitals. And I don't know where that, the limitation falls here. We as trustees have a responsibility under the legislation that created the hospital district be responsible for the health care of the entire community of Marion County. So you're saying if we decided to take those funds and create clinics or health facilities throughout the county, that, that would be prohibited under any agreement that you would enter into? Now, I, keep in mind the 
each of these partnerships is unique to itself. So each of our um, relationships we've had with foundations is unique to that particular community. And what that foundation wanted to do, the intent is that you don't, you're collaborating with your hospital that's part of that community. You don't want to go and harm that. So um, our, our history has been hospitals, ambulatory surgeries, and tertiary uh, facilities that, um, as opposed to clinics, of hospitals and uh, ASCs. So that's been our most recent uh, rendition. But the world changes, though. You know, the healthcare world changes and evolves, and each, each one's different. So we would have to get from you what your expectations are. At the same time, the goal is to keep it all in one fabric so the community grows and thrives. The, uh, the most typical example we've seen is where uh, the public entity that we lease the hospital from wants to have a clinic for uh, people that don't have health insurance. Uh, in, in, in most of those cases, they've come to us and said, we want to have a clinic uh, where we have the money to help because we have a foundation wherever we're happy. We normally will do it for them. Uh, in some cases, they've chosen to do it on their own, and that's fine. They've typically just come and said, how, how can we best serve? What are the gaps and services that we can provide? And we've worked very closely with them. And in most cases, we've actually contributed as well. Uh, that happened to us up in Lake City. Just by example, in Lake City, as I mentioned, the, um, that was a district hospital that had a formal lease with Chance, and we created a new partnership. They kept that indigent care clinic, and that was part of their ongoing you know, contribution back to the community. So they kept that. And again, that was their choice. So, as Alan said, we work with whatever scenario works is a best fit for the community and the new foundation and for our hospital. Okay, Tarv, you had a question? I'm just going to clarify something, Harvey, if I can. Go ahead. Just to clarify something, since we have a hospital district here, the lease payments made by the partner in this case, whoever that might be, would go back to the district, either annually or paid up front. The existing foundation that's created to support the hospital currently would be would remain in place and maybe would be How Monroe Regional would fit into the HMA network. Um, it, it appears that Monroe would be a, an important piece of the puzzle, so to speak. Um, we all hope to continue what we do here at Monroe and kind of bring it to the next level. How would you do that? I mean, you, you talk about bringing more services here, but that seems to be in contrast to what you have going on with Shands, about bringing patients from the community hospitals that don't offer the services to Shands. There's a lot of <clears throat> overlap uh, between the services. You, you mentioned tertiary versus quaternary services. Certainly Shands offers services that we never could give. Uh, but a lot of it is overlap, and although you say that the purpose isn't to shift patients to Shands, my experience as a practitioner here in the community is, you know, I passed more billboards than I could ever hope to have seen that said, we're Shands, we taught your doctors how to be doctors, come to us. <laughs> you mentioned a lot about da Vinci robots. I'm a urologist, I've done hundreds and hundreds of these cases, and the Shands people came in direct competition right here. It's always my opinion that Shands views this as their secondary catchment area. So please explain to me why, I understand why this would be a good piece of your puzzle. Why would you be a good piece of our puzzle? You want me to go first and then you, okay. Well, to, hey, first of all, today you are in a, a little bit of a competitive environment with Shands. Shands, because you're not, you're not part of the Shands network or system. So there is somewhat, the chance has to do what it does, just like you, you have to go out and compete. We see signs, actually, frankly, you have very good billboards in Citrus County. Uh, 
And so, I mean, so I think it's good. I mean, that's competition is good. You've been very effective at that. And that's why we came to your cardiologist and said we want to work with Monroe. That's a good example, really, of how Monroe would become our flagship in North Florida for our hospitals that, in terms of how we do our, our referrals. Let me explain why this works so well with Shans. What Shans made clear to us early on was they're not interested in doing the things we should be doing in our hospitals. And they've actually provided us with physician expertise to help build our programs in our communities. Um, where, for instance, uh, whether it's, if it's vascular or in some areas where we just started, or we're starting a urology program at Seven Rivers, and Shans is working with us in that program. Um, so what we do normally, is we go into a hospital, our own included, we do this every year. We do an assessment of what programs we have, what services we currently offer, and what level they're at. So for instance, we might have a, a hospital that has an interventional heart program but doesn't do open heart surgery. Obviously that wouldn't be true here. So we ask ourselves, what does it take to get from interventional to open heart? And we purpose ourselves with getting the hospital positioned to be able to do that. We have hospitals that are primary stroke centers. We say, well, why are they not comprehensive stroke centers? What do we need to do to get to a comprehensive stroke center status? We're using the same consultant you are, uh, Bishop, that you're using for trauma. Currently, we have several hospitals in Florida, not in this region, that, that are probably appropriate for trauma. And so we're evaluating that right now. Again, we have very busy ERs, all the high-intensity services, but what is the next level we can raise that hospital to? That's how we approach you know, service line development. And we do this every single year because that's how we decide how to deploy our capital. And I will tell you, for instance, our relationship with Da Vinci, we're the only company in America that when we buy the Da Vinci SI, the single site robot, our hospitals are nas becoming national training sites for Da Vinci. Uh, so we, 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 we have, we, not only do we have, not only are we one of the largest, the largest provider of Da Vinci robotic surgeries as a percentage of the total facilities that we have, but we've, we've evolved our relationship actually to education because so many doctors want to learn all these new procedures. Started obviously with OB and, and urology and now it's getting into general surgery and some of the other specialties. So it, 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 this is, that's the service line development piece. The other piece of this that is really important given the evolution of how healthcare is, is changing and how the payers are viewing hospitals, what's beginning to happen is hospitals are becoming commoditized. Payers are coming into a market and saying, well, you're really good, but so are they. They're doing it for less money. They're cheaper. Their cost structure is lower. So we're going we're gonna to direct volume there. By becoming part of a larger network of hospitals that includes Shands and health management, it provides you the strength of being able to sit with a payer and say, you're not just talking to Monroe anymore. If you want to have a contract, if you're going to do something with the guys down the street, you're either going to provide a relevant, good relationship with Monroe whether it's a bundled payment or whether it's a, a, a just pure rates, or you're not going to get this other hospital down the street where you need us. And so we try to, it, that's how we also drive our service development because many times what's beginning to happen with bundled payments is, there, you know, cardiology is a great example where we can, we can go in any one of our communities and say, if you need, whether it's a, a, just a diagnostic procedure or you need open heart surgery or a transplant, we have the full complement of services available in our network. And that's how Monroe fits. Yeah, the, the, uh... It was a very comprehensive response. I would say it's, uh, it's a transition from being competitor to a member of the family. And, and when you're... That's an easier way to say it. <laughs> and, uh, and, and we, as members of the family, we work out those relationships so we don't step on each other's toes. And together, we offer more services to the community. And, uh, and I, I don't apologize for the competitive aspect. I do apologize, by the way, for those billboards. But that was years before I got here. And those are out there. Uh, but uh, I do. Uh, uh, I think that this question about competition, whether you think it's the right thing for healthcare or not, it is, it is what the public wants. They want competition in healthcare. And uh, I think competition is now generating innovations where a few years ago you would not see an investor-owned company like Health Management and a not-for-profit like Shands in a partnership. Uh, I think we were the groundbreakers in the country in terms of this. Now many people are emulating that. 
you probably wouldn't see partnerships like we could develop together in our community offer urological services either. But it is a transition from competition to cooperation. Randy, do you have a question? How long have you been affiliated with Seven Rivers? Um, back 2002, 2001. Nine, we, we purchased uh, Seven Rivers from Kenner. Is that a hospital we can look at and say that's what we'll become, or is it the other way around? And if it's the other way around, why is why are we where we are and they where they are? Maybe, maybe I can after maybe nine years. Maybe these guys. No, so long, <laughs> eleven years. Eleven years. Um, I'm going to add to what the question you asked. But how do you how do you make all this work? And our hospitals in Florida, um, all 22 of them, mostly primary and secondary hospitals, and then um, a handful of tertiary hospitals. So Seven Rivers is a very good example of that when patients in uh, Seven Rivers have to seek advanced care beyond their facility, they typically go to Tampa. That's about 100 miles away. Uh, Ocala is only half that distance. And Alan and his team and Joyce Brancato are developing new relationships between uh, the medical staff at Seven Rivers and Monroe. So to our mind, quality and timeliness and service and distance is, is shorter. So you know, we, we've estimated the best way we can looking at, well, how many patients leave that market to go to Tampa? We're estimating nearly 1,000 patients a year should be coming to Monroe instead of going to Tampa Gibbons. So part of that relationship would be to find those physicians closer uh, with uh, patients and services so that you know, that's that new opportunity that you don't have today. Let me, let me add to that. Uh, Seven Rivers is just a different um, type of hospital. It's a different community. It's much smaller geographically. It's much. It's not an Ocala. Uh, it's not on an interstate, and there's and there's a much smaller fleet medical community there. Um, a hospital that I would point you to that 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 I think shows what happens when we enter a market is Haines City, part of Florida. Um, it's a hospital that we acquired. Uh, gosh, it was probably 1992. Yeah, 1992. It was a very small hospital. It was, uh, it was struggling. Um, in fact, nobody else wanted it. Uh, we acquired that hospital. Subsequently, we, we, we addressed some of the service gaps that were there and then built a brand new hospital right along I-4. And now it is, last year it did uh, 13,000 admissions. Uh, it's probably going to become a trauma center. Uh, and it is, uh, is really, actually, it is now U.S. News and World Report's best hospital in Polk County. Better than it, U.S. News rated it higher than Lakeland Regional, which is three times its size. And so I think that's a great model of where we, because the community could support that size hospital, they just didn't capitalize it, to your point, Mr. Shrack. I mean, it just hadn't been capitalized before. The physicians hadn't been recruited into the community that they needed. Once we started recruiting physicians, once we started investing capital and developed a vision for that place, it exploded. And, and we've seen that in other places like Venice and and. and where we just conducted the, uh, the first uh, robotic valve surgery in, in Sarasota County. We did it before Sarasota Memorial. Uh, so we've done some really great things with hospitals and communities like Ocala. I would not necessarily compare Seven Rivers with Ocala, but I do think Seven Rivers properly should be a hospital that has a tertiary partner like Ocala. And as to the Shands uh, relationship, what's, what's really benefited Shands in this isn't the everyday stuff that we do at Seven Rivers. Remember, we're in competitive markets there too. So we compete with other hospitals in each of these markets. Uh, in, in Hernando County, we compete with, with another HCA hospital, a good competitor. The more, bit, the more competitive we are locally, the more business that we're able to draw into our hospitals because doctors decide they would prefer to use our hospitals. When we get that tertiary and quaternary work that before then was going somewhere else, We've captured it in our system, and that quaternary business is what gets referred up to Shands, and that's where their expertise is. So it's it's really been casting the the, the being competitive in the local market, uh, being able to get more physicians to determine that our hospital is a place they want their patients to go. Then those relationships, the quaternary relationships, enter into, into play when we can't provide those services locally. Um, learn to work with 
with a whole new paradigm, um, it may be more difficult. Uh, not that long ago, I got, had the privilege of spending the entire night in the emergency room with a patient who was in an automobile accident who needed to be transferred because of a severe pelvic fracture to a trauma center. She couldn't pass the wallet biopsy to get to Shands. She could be ground transported there. So we reached out to other trauma centers, and the helicopters were grounded because it was in December and it's foggy. So I stayed with that patient. She died that night. Now, <clears throat> your Parthenon shows that your middle value was doing the right thing. So you're telling me that with a handshake, we will change things and suddenly open the door or transfer patients in an appropriate manner. Recognizing that um, this community is the county of Marion County, the size of Rhode Island, the population of 330,000 people. And it's not just about the hospital, it's about the people of this community. And up to this point, it's not been about market share, it's been about providing services to the community. Recognizing that hospitals make their money by getting market share and by taking care of the cash cows and demarketing those that don't pay but in a situation of a safety net hospital having to take care of all comers, we've developed a system where our hospital provides top-notch care for the citizens of our community regardless of payer mix. That's caused us to be very good at what we do, and we get accolades for that. At the same time, we have a population of people that's 27% over 65, the oldest county in Florida. And all of the studies show that our population is one of the sickest in the state. So while we take good care of them in the hospital, we're not providing care for our community. So population management is going to be very important. And we've embarked upon clinical integration to get our physicians in the community more integrated with the hospital, to start to do preventative care, to try to do earlier management of chronic disease, and to try to reach into the population and make it accountable for its own outcomes. Um, I recognize your need to put money into the facility, but I don't hear enough talk about clinical integration, reaching out into the community, reaching those points of presence that may not require bricks and mortar in the facility itself, but rather reaching out into the community to change the paradigm five years from now when many hospitals across the nation will be shrinking because they're providing better services to the community and not having to provide emergency care. So I would like to hear your opinion about integrated care, whether you can work with the HIE, which we have already started here. We can allow our 15-county HIE become a 21-county HIE involving your community and what other things you have to do that you can help us to be uh, bigger than we are reaching to our community than just in the hospital. I'll start. Um, you mentioned a lot there, and it's all, it was all excellent. And so I'm going to try to start from the beginning and work my way through. Um, doctor, we, we, I, I have to tell you, um, as it relates to the, our commitment to caring for people, regardless of their ability to pay, all I can point to is our track record. Um, on average, about 17% uh, of our patient days are Medicaid and charity. We have some hospitals, and I know Monroe is somewhere in that range also, I think around 14 or 15%. We have some hospitals that are much lower. We have many that are higher. The reality is that the, 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 it used to be, it used to be years ago, that the ownership status of the hospital would be a predictor for whether they took care of the poor or not. It's not really true in Florida anymore. If you, regardless of where you go in Florida, some of the, some of the larger um, um, providers of care to the poor are not, in fact, not-for-profit or even public. Some of them are investor-owned. And in some areas, they're very, the investor owns are very low, while the, while the not-for-profit public hospital is very high. So what I would ask you to look at, really, is the, the track record of the partner that, that is at the table. We, we have, part of why we developed the stroke partnership with Shands, as I mentioned earlier, was that service wasn't available. The integration wasn't available in the community. So what happened is people with a stroke would come into our hospital. We had very capable physicians. But th there's limits to what they can do locally, as you know. And so we, we would have to go through the struggle of identifying what the needs of that patient were and then getting them to the right setting, wherever that setting was. Sometimes they would come here. Most of the, excuse me, um, Shands, most of the time they were going down to Tampa. And the wait times to get them transferred was enormous. And so 
we said, look, we've got to find something that's better. And that's why Shan stepped in and said, all right, here's what we'll do. We'll put together protocols. Their faculty work with our local physicians and said, here's the protocols that we would put together. If these protocols work and the medical staff locally agreed on those protocols, they follow those protocols. So now there is no delay when a patient, when they've identified a patient that meets those requirements, they immediately begin the transfer process. So we've substantially reduced the time it takes. That's the kind of integration we're trying to do. Some of the things we're talking about now with cancer are really groundbreaking, and I can't get into too much detail here because it's still in development, but what's important to somebody who's diagnosed with cancer? Uh, we've all experienced it in our families, myself included. You know, you're a family, you've got a loved one who's been diagnosed, now what? Now what do I do? I've got, I've got to go meet that doctor, I have to go visit that doctor, I'm gonna, should I go to Sloan Kettering, should I go to MD Anderson? What we've realized is when you really do an inventory of all of our hospitals and all the services available at Shands, no one has to leave the state to get the care they need. Most of the time, they don't even have to leave their community. It's just not coordinated. It's not integrated as you talk about. So we're talking about case management and providing the family the full range, not just the clinical services, but the social needs that they have. It's very traumatic for a family that's, has to, that's now caring for a loved one that's got cancer. So what are the needs of that family? So we're talking about taking that full range of needs and saying, okay, now, this is something that's important not only to families in the community, but also to payers, because that's where they're going. That's where the payers are heading. They're saying, who can do this from diagnosis to full range of services so that the cost is predictable and we know the quality of the providers that are going to be in this network. So that's the kind of integration we're talking about. And I, I, I feel pretty strongly about it, and it really did start for, for me um, when, when we dealt with that coach at Lacanto High School. That's when I saw it in play. We had all the local doctors were there. They wanted to take care of this person. They couldn't do it. And that's really triggered the real discussion between us and Chance about, okay, all these affiliations that you hear about, these academic affiliations, they're all great. What do they really mean? What we've said is, no, we're not going to do an academic affiliation just because it's really cool to have the UF and Shan's name on our hospitals. We want to go beneath the, beneath the hood. What does it mean to the patient? And, and that's really what's built this partnership. And we feel like it's, it's gone well. We have light years to go to get where we want to be. Uh, but, it, but, but what we've started is a very healthy foundation culturally. It starts with us actually respecting each other and, and each other's roles. I can't name a single patient that we've sent to Shands that they haven't sent back to our doctor in the community. Our doctors are now the biggest advocates for this relationship. And I think Shan Tim could probably I couldn't add a word to that. Sorry. <laughs> Any other questions anyone has? Okay, well, well thank you for can I say one thing? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, you know, one of the questions earlier was about the commitment to the community and and uh, programs that our hospitals in. And again, as I mentioned before, there 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 are many. But I want to give you an example in Naples. In Naples, we're involved in Habitat for Humanity, not just with our financial resources. We have uh, associates who go four weekends in a row, and. Uh, and work on these homes, and, and I've had the pleasure and, uh, and the privilege of being part of that. Uh, we also are very uh, well involved, both financially and with people, uh, on the Relay for Life in the community. And for now, for two years, we've been we've partnered with a couple. Well, with one of particular elementary schools, two years now, and one this is the first year we've partnered. Uh, Mike Davis Elementary School. You can imagine, you hear Naples, and you think, well, that's a pretty affluent community. Well, in East Naples, there's a school called Mike Davis, where 60% of the students are considered homeless by state standards. Um, 78, five, 78% of those students have never crossed a bridge. They've never been in a vehicle or walked across a bridge. And we financially support their programs. These students as well uh, have a backpack program where uh, the administrators are sending these children home, many of them, with a backpack of food for the weekend because otherwise they wouldn't have anything to eat. We're, we're involved in that in a big way. I'm very proud of that. And I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you very much. Let's open it up to any uh, public uh, comment or question. There's only one name on the list, but that was the first one up. 
Uh, Chuck Pardee, I reside at 2769 Northeast 32nd Place. I would like to uh, thank you all for coming to our community. Um, you know, this whole issue is an extremely complicated complex. Uh, I mean, it's just uh, the public doesn't understand all the intricate parts of this thing. The lease, the, the, the tenant, leasey, all this other stuff. There, and, and what it does, it breeds a lot of scare in the community. Uh, one of them is we won't have indigent care. Another one is that we won't have local control. I think most of those questions have been answered. Another one that I keep hearing popped up is the profit, nonprofit conflict. I personally believe that even a nonprofit, profit is being made. You have doctors with contracts, you have all these other places with contracts, people that deal with the hospitals have contracts, they don't all work for nothing. How can you explain to the voters and make them feel confident about how a, one of the things, another thing that, that concerns them is the price of uh, health insurance is go, or health is going to go up, uh, that either that or you won't have the level of service. How can you explain and make the voters of Marion County that own this hospital feel more comfortable about the private non uh, the profit nonprofit aspect of this? And I just thank you, Chuck. Uh, Chuck take it from the at a high level. If you look at your newsletter that um, Steve has printed that describes you know the hospital, the medical center, your financial situation and you see in the in your income statement for last year you had approximately six million dollars in profit but then you have to pay principal and interest on your debt which is about seven million dollars so you you can be a profitable organization and, and six million dollars is not a sharp stick in the eye but seven seven million dollars in principal interest is so you you have as any business whether you're a healthcare Entity or a government or a, an auto dealer, you have to have produce enough profit to pay your principal and interest on your debt and other things. So part of this transaction is um, you have to be a profitable facility in order to continue to grow capital and add services and all. And if you have debt, you have to pay it down. And part of this transaction is to pay off that debt. And that is one of the, the greatest relief that a, a hospital could ever have is if you go forward with zero debt, think and act and uh, plan a different future than when you're saddled with $114 million in debt, no matter how, how well you run your hospital. Um, so that's one of the, the, the things that occurs in a community is as part of a transaction, that debt goes away. And it allows you to begin thinking differently about your health system, particularly when you have a company like Health Management that has, has offered to pay off that debt with the, tr the proceeds, as well as put back capital into the hospital. It changes things overnight, and you'll, you'll find that when you go through that process. It's a difficult process you're going through, and you shouldn't go through it more than just once. So picking that partner um, and planning that activity going forward, you have a thriving hospital beyond the transaction. I want to thank Health Management for coming. It was very informative and very impressive. Yes, um, the balance of the meeting, we'll, we'll take a break for a few minutes. I do know that uh, we'll have some discussion on the two groups. Uh, if the public wants to stay, they're more invited. And we'll take five, seven-minute break and then uh, get back together. Thank you very so thank much. You. We appreciate it.